My name is Amar Joe Singh and I specialize in spouse work permit and also in marriage sponsorship applications. One of the uh, factors by which the visa offices look at the legitimacy of the uh, of the relationship, whether it's genuine or not, according to R two zero five C two, is how long have you been married? You know, how is your cohabitation? How have you been, uh, you know, developed from friendship to romance, and then then your your uh, combination of affairs into a couple, and, and there are miscellaneous factors. Uh, what if there's a child involved? What if the uh, the family has a child, and what if uh, possibly the, when the wife is 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 pregnant, would you still consider this relationship as not genuine, not meeting the definition of bona fide? You know, think about it. Um, one of the cases which I was uh, dealing, the application was rejected despite the wife is pregnant. The wife is in Canada, and the husband is in is in India. Uh, so I I was little intrigued by uh, how how is it that they they ignored the pregnancy as a part of uh, genuineness of the marriage. So I looked up some some court cases, the immigration refugee and board cases, and I made a list of few cases where it was favored that this is a good indication of the genuineness of marriage. But but there are some some other cases also where it was not determinative that it is it is a, a measure of genuineness of marriage. So I have listed. Here about three cases where it was determined and I will read out to you what the judges said, why they thought that presence of a child is a, is a good indication of genuineness. So uh, let's take a look. So I'm going to scroll down. I have three cases here and by the way there's a footnote so I will, I will show you later. You can also search on Google this court case and go to the uh, IAD website or you can go to uh, Canly and then can read the case yourself directly. So this was in 2007, a person called Ajla. Uh, the panel had said, in my view, when, I'm going to highlight this. In my view, when there's a child of the marriage, especially without, a, without an issue regarding paternity, this is a salient factor to be taken into account in favor of the parent's case. Absent exceptional circumstances to prove otherwise, a reasonable person accept this evidence as proof of general relationship. So in Ajla case, it was yes. All right. So let's take a look at the second case. They all looks like they all Indian cases. A decision of the federal court Gill puts in a straightforward manner the rationale for the evidentiary presumption that having a child for the marriage has on the bona fides of the relationship, Mr. Justice Barnes said at paragraph 8, of course, it's a long case, the board was correct in acknowledging that in the assessment of legitimacy of the case, great weight must be attributed to the birth of the child. When, oh, sorry, where there's no question about paternity, it will not be unreasonable to apply our evidentiary presumption in favor of genesis of such marriage. There are many reasons of affording great significance to such event, not the least of which is that the parties to the fraudulent marriage are unlikely to risk a lifetime responsibility associated with raising a child. Such a concern is heightened in a situation like this where the parents are persons of very modest means. So this one is also yes. Uh, there's another case. Uh, this is in Itchrak. Oh, Sheriff. I don't know uh, what nationality this, but I'll. Oh, by the way, all this is on footnote. You can type on Google and then search these cases. The case number, everything is listed here. Ajla, Gill, and the last one is Ishrak. All right. So let's uh, take a look at Ishrak. The fact that appellant was seven months pregnant. These are all IED cases, by the way, Immigration Appeal Division cases. Seven months pregnant at the hearing is a relevant factor, among others, which the court has taken into account in assessing the authenticity of the marriage. While taking note of the fact that pregnancy after a date of refusal of the application, the court nevertheless very difficult to imagine that people from a traditional uh, Muslim society is forced to conceive a child for the sole purpose to obtain a PR a visa for Canada. The court is satisfied, given the totality of evidence, that the co couple intends to live together permanently in the legitimate marital union. It's very clear, very, uh, very solid. All right, one more case. This is Claire. Uh, this is also in your name. IED held a paragraph nine dad. In fact, our director, maybe we shall read this out. The fact uh, of the parent's current pregnancy is a relevant factor to consider in terms of my assessment of the bona fides of the couple. So this is also uh, going in that direction. Uh, so I'm just going to underline this. I'm hard pressed to accept that individuals would contrive to conceive a child for the sole purpose of securing an immigrant visa to Canada at the same time as 
pointed out the hearing the division as members have dismissed appeals in those very circumstances in other circumstances especially where uh, people uh, you know the wife became pregnant after the refusal they trying to boost up the chances so you know they thought maybe pregnancy in those cases it was dismissed but before the refusal they were not literally they were they were allowed uh, so uh, okay strong evidence however is necessary to support such a conclusion in looking to the circumstances of the pregnancy there are factors that given the panel uh, pause I don't know what the okay I know the pregnancy occurred post refusal so this was I was talking about uh, within weeks of parents sojourn in India she attended a medical clinic and confirmed her pregnancy the panel is not naive and the distinct possibility arises that this couple simply conceived a child to advance the case on appeal in my VP view and given my negative credibility conclusion regarding such of the such much of the witness conduct sorry along with the applicant's stated rationale for the planned pregnancy as being the couple wanted a baby uh, to play with it is certainly open to me conclude that the appellant's pregnancy was designed to assess their case on appeal having said this I'm not persuaded this conclusion necessarily leads to determination the couple has no intention of residing permanently together a legitimate spousal union even though it is very possible that people may have used a pregnancy as a tactic to solidify their their appeal factors and and you know show a strong conjugal union but you know the last line is very important here I'm not persuaded that this conclusion necessarily leads to a determination that the couple have no intention of residing permanently together and, and let's make it possible so this is also yes so we, we saw four cases where where uh, you know you have precedence that uh, the presence of child or pregnancy was a factor that you know provided a boost in establishing bona fides of the marriage there are other cases where it, it did not but those are in a different circumstances and I and there's no point in, in dwelling on those because in spousal visa cases those factors uh, typically do not exist so this is all I had to let you know for you to think about uh, you know if your uh, you know partner is pregnant and if you have a child uh, you know uh, that that can play a, a solid factor but hey you never know how the visa office is, uh, you know, is, is is looking at this case right now because I've had a recent ref refusal, and I'm looking to, uh, you know, you know, challenge them with with what they have, and you know, let's see how it how it goes. But you know, it's a it's a it's a good uh, good reference to these cases. You've got four references, so if you're doing your own applications, make sure that you use those references and tell them this is what happened in those previous cases thank you very much as always i i uh, look at your comments and i read your feedback thank you very much